I'm Gene Liu and I'm an otolaryngologist, head and neck surgeon, or ear, nose, and throat doctor here in Los Angeles. And today I wanted to talk about acute otitis externa, or swimmer's ear. Swimmer's ear occurs when the ear canal gets infected or inflamed. It generally is going to show up as pain and drainage. Otitis externa is very different from ear infections that we typically talk about in kids, which is otitis media or behind the eardrum. Otitis media normally gives you pain that's further in the ear, maybe some fever, but typically no drainage and no tenderness when you're tugging on the outside of the ear. As the name suggests, otitis externa usually happens from water exposure, so frequently in people who swim a lot or surf a lot, but it can happen to anybody even if you haven't spent a lot of time in the water. In general, though, it's due to moisture getting trapped in that dark little tunnel. The skin gets a little irritated, gets a little puffy, starts to drain, the skin starts to peel off, and that can be uncomfortable. Almost always, swimmer's ear isn't going to give you any fever or any symptoms anywhere else in the body. It doesn't come with a stuffy nose. It doesn't come with a sore throat. It's just pain and drainage from the ear. Occasionally, if you look right at the opening, you're going to see a little swelling or puffiness or redness. And if it's really dramatic, it can cause puffiness even out to the rest of the ear. If the swimmer's ear is mild, it can sometimes be managed by just keeping the ear dry and using some over-counter drops like swim ear. If the swimmer's ear is more serious, a lot of times you may need some antibiotic ear drops, and that can be prescribed by the physician. If there's a lot of drainage coming out, then sometimes the medication can't get into the ear canal. In that case, sometimes you need to see the doctor to get the ear sucked out before the drops can even get in. If the ear canal is swollen enough, it's possible that the ear will swell shut and drops can't get in. If that's the case, we sometimes put an ear wick or basically a tiny little glorified medical tampon in the ear just to allow the drops to get in and prevent the swelling from completely closing down. The little sponge will sit there to keep it open and as the inflammation settles down, it opens up and the little sponge may fall out. If it keeps happening again and again, then usually we want to do something to prevent it. Either that means using something to dry the ear after you come out of the water, so a hair dryer blowing at your ear, maybe the swim your ear drops after swimming, and sometimes we'll even suggest wearing earplugs or staying out of the water entirely. If you just had an episode of swimmer's ear, then it may take a few weeks for the skin of the ear canal to completely recover. Once it's recovered, then you can start getting it wet again and it's not a problem. But usually in the early stages of treatment, we want to keep water out. One way to keep water out of the ear during baths and showers is to slather some Vaseline or Neosporin or Vasotracin on a cotton ball and put it in that little bowl of your ear. The cotton ball without the ointment is just going to soak, get wet, and the water is going to get through. The, the cotton ball is really to hold the ointment in place, and the ointment is what creates the seal to keep the water out. If you're using reusable earplugs to keep water out, that's fine. But if you've been using it during an active infection, it gets covered with really grimy stuff. You don't want to keep putting it back into your ear. So you either have to throw them away each time you use it, or depending on what they're made of, clean them with rubbing alcohol or something so that you're not continually reintroducing infection into the ear. During or shortly after an infection, it's important to let the ear be able to air out. So if you're wearing something like hearing aids that's constantly blocking your ear, then you want to, as much as possible, leave it out so that it can air dry. Again, once the skin is completely recovered, you can go back to your normal activities. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any additional questions, please leave it in the comments below.